This is a patient with a failed 50-year-old cornea graft and is only seeing eye. The lens bag complex is dislocated onto the retina. So here we're going to want to take that out, do Yamani and our penetrating keratoplasty all in one shot as this is his only seeing eye and he comes from uh, pretty far away from out of town. So here we're gonna go ahead and place now pars planar trocars. Uh, these are 23 gauge trocars, make some paracentesis. Um, this patient has had a previous retina attachment years ago treated with a buckle, but he's not been vitrectomized. Uh, we're putting in our chandelier light now and making a peripheral uh, clear cornea incision. Um, the view through this cornea is not fantastic, but we can see well enough to do the pars plane of vitrectomy. Here we're doing a posterior vitrectomy, cleaning up all the vitreous. We can see the lens bag complex dancing around on the retina. That's my trocar. That you can see my, from my infusion line. Um, not going to show the whole vitrectomy, but the eye was completely vitrectomized. I'm then going to aspirate this lens bag complex up off the retina using the vitrector with the cutter off. Uh, I'm going to grab this now with a maxi grip forceps securely and bring it up anteriorly where I can grab it through the limbus with a micro grasper. Once this is grabbed, I can uh, then bring it up into the uh, into a chamber over the iris, which fortunately dilates fairly well. So now the lens bag complex with all the summering's ring material is in the anterior chamber. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half uh, completely and um, remove it one half at a time. There we go. Here comes the uh, first half out. And I want to be very careful to make sure I get all the summering's ring material out because this can cause significant inflammation. Uh, so we're going to burp all that out and try to be careful to make sure none of it falls posteriorly. Otherwise, I'll have to go back and get it. So here's the uh, other half of the lens. I'm going to grab this, manipulate it so I can pull this out through the main incision here. This is a 2.75 millimeter clear cornea incision. And now I can go ahead and burp out the rest of the summering's ring, which uh, all comes out nicely. Now we're going to go ahead and scrape the cornea, remove the epithelium to give myself a better view. Uh, I could have done this earlier in the procedure, but I thought my view was uh, good enough. Um, but for the Imani portion of the procedure, I really want to maximize my view. Uh, I'm going to be using an AR-40 for this, and it can be a little tricky to dock the haptics, so I need a good view. Here we're marking the eye with a uh, Ashwin Argawal marker. I'm going to inject my AR-40 lens uh, into the uh, anterior chamber on top of the iris. And here I'm using a 30-gauge TSK needle, and um, I want to make a reasonably long scleral tunnels with the needle so they'll be nice and secure when I remove the cornea. Um, here I'm gonna dock the first haptic into the 30 gauge TSK needle, and this goes nicely. It's definitely more difficult to dock the uh, AR-40 haptics than the uh, Zeiss CT Lucia haptics, but I've had good success using this lens, so I'm continuing to use it to avoid the rotisserie phenomena that we've all heard about now. So here I'm going to go ahead and make my second needle pass. And I want to make a, a pretty long, uh, secure scleral tunnel with this needle uh, because I'm going to be taking the roof off the side and I uh, want to make sure that the lens holds really well. So here I'm uh, going ahead and docking my second haptic. I've grabbed it and I'm going to feed it into this needle. And you have to be careful not to crimp the haptic when you do this. Uh, after removing my epithelium here, my view is uh, pretty decent, uh, so I'm uh, not having too much difficulty seeing what I'm doing. I feed the uh, haptic in uh, about two or three millimeters, and now I'm going to pull both haptics out of the eye simultaneously. Um, I uh, have now have a nicely centered lens. I'm going to melt the first haptic. And uh, now I'll melt the second haptic and try to create a button-shaped melt by holding it relatively close to the end of the haptic. You can see here, and that melts uh, into a little button. And the, the haptics are pretty tight in these scleral tunnels. They really uh, 
actually take a little force to push in. I'm gonna push them all the way in so they're nice and secure on the conjunctiva. I'll now put in some myostat to bring the pupil down and stroke the pupil to bring it down so I can go ahead and make my peripheral aerodotomy with the vitrector. I'm putting this at six o'clock. Uh, so now I'm gonna remove a couple of these trocars and uh, suture my fluoring ring in place. I've left my infusion line trocar, but the infusion is off. Uh, here we're doing our trepanation with a Baron Hesburgh vacuum tree fine. I'm cutting out the diseased cornea. And um, I go ahead and suture the new graft in place with uh, eight interrupteds and a 16 byte running. I've adjusted the running suture to reduce astigmatism. I pressurized the eye and this looks uh, pretty good. Uh, I interviewed this patient about an hour later in the recovery area when he was alert. Uh, Steve's woken up now. We just finished his surgery. Steve, how are you doing? I feel good, fine, great. Good, can you see out of that eye? I see fine, I see your phone. I even see the little camera in the back of the phone. Great, great. You know what this is here? Can you see that? Yeah, that's your picture with your ID. Oh, great, great. So you seem pretty decent already? I see better now than when I came in. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, I'm glad we were able to do this all for you in one shot. We'll see you in the office tomorrow, okay? 8, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Great. Thank you, Steve. That's right. Thank you, Doc.